Hello everyone and welcome back to gameplay of Sam Plays Playground. This is the ultimate mashup of every multiplayer map I have built in Far Cry 5 into one crazy single map. If you are new around here guys, this series works in a pretty interesting way. It's a two video format for each map. The first video I post is a speed build of the entire map from start to finish with my commentary over the top. So you get to hear the things I was trying to accomplish, the barriers I encountered along the way, and hopefully their solutions as well. Those first videos are always extremely popular, so if you haven't seen the one for this map, be sure to go and check it out. Because this video itself today will make a whole lot more sense if you understand the build process behind what you are seeing today. The second video, which is what we do have here, is gameplay of that map in action and now I reflect upon the pros and cons of the map in the hope that if I were to build something similar in the future or you were to do so yourself, that we have some lessons that we can incorporate and not repeat any mistakes. Now, let's jump in to the pros and cons of the Sand Plays Playground. Now, before I go any further, it's very important to remind everybody that this was a bit of a... Uh, a fan service map if you will. This build wasn't taken necessarily too seriously, don't get me wrong, it took bloody ages to build, but the the actual gameplay itself, it was all a compromise because it was a mashup of maps that were never meant to be thrown together, so the visuals are obviously quite aggressive in terms of how quickly they change, and of course the gameplay itself did have to take a bit of a sacrifice simply because again, this map was not designed from the ground up to all fit together like it has here. That said guys, I do have quite a few pros. I was pleasantly surprised at how well the map played. So jumping into the specifics, <coughs> the gameplay. The gameplay is good. I was actually really surprised. Uh, my biggest concern going into testing this map for the first time was actually the scale. I've told you guys time and time again how often scale has caught me out in Far Cry, especially during my first two to three maps, just making things too big. Now, obviously, when you're merging a ton of maps, scale is something that's naturally going to grow. So I had very limited control. However, I was very, very pleased to see just how intense this map is, especially in deathmatch. And uh, yeah, you never really find yourself running around looking for anybody when you're in the deathmatch mode. Team deathmatch is another story, we'll get to that shortly. But overall, I was really pleased with just how intense this map is despite its size. The next thing I was really pleased with on this map is that, again, we're playing with the jokes a bit here. So in Hell's Arena, which is a map encapsulated within the rocks you can see to the right of the frame there on screen. Um, there's a number of animals in that area, just like there is in the real map. And uh, yeah, it's actually really fun to release those and have them run around the map. They can get pretty much anywhere. And it just adds a bit of a fun dynamic to this map. Again, I've never built a bit of a joking, you know, play around map before. So this was a breath of fresh air for me as well, not to take anything too seriously. And I feel like because of the animals thrown in there and, you know, the ultimate nostalgia trip across all these maps, it's just a fun map to play when you just want a casual session. So yeah, I was really, really pleased with just how fun focused everything is. And that brings us to the last thing, which is my biggest surprise in terms of the good aspects, and that is Deathmatch plays better. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I always build my maps for team deathmatch and anytime I add deathmatch which is all versus all it's normally just as a bonus mode and I had that mindset going into the sand plays playground as well I built it from the ground up thinking yep this is going to predominantly play as team deathmatch and you know I'll put deathmatch up as well just in case anyone wants to play it like that when I jumped in, I found out that Deathmatch was actually by far the better option. You encounter players far more often because everybody is an enemy. And yeah, it just suits the sort of crazy mismatch style of this map because there's no obvious uh, lines where one team meets the other. There's no territories as such as some of my other maps definitely emphasize. Deathmatch just works. This is an ultimate mashup of craziness and the game mode of Deathmatch certainly reflects that. So yeah, I was really, really surprised, but in the future, I think I'm going to be far more open to the possibility of deathmatch versions of my maps as well. Now, I've spoken myself up a whole lot here. Let's jump into the things that can be improved, and there's quite a few. The first, I want to say quite a few, most of them are actually quite minor though. The only big one that I've discovered is that a lot of the gameplay seems to be skewed towards the rupture section of the map. And if you're not sure what section that is, again, check out the first speed build because these sort of references will make sense. So yeah, for some reason, a lot of the players seem to gravitate towards the rupture side of the map as opposed to the other side, which is a combination of Fort Wars, New Dawn, um, 
uh, Hell's Arena is the other one, and Fort Wars Vietnam. Now, the only assumption I can make is that Rupture is obviously a relatively wide open and straight street, so it's relatively easy to navigate and pick enemies off from a distance. Whereas the other side of the map, which is the combination of three different ones, is a bit more crazy, it's a bit more zigzaggy, so I imagine it's just a bit more time consuming to run over that end of the world. Don't get me wrong, there's still plenty of combat that takes place over there, but there's definitely a, uh, a waiting towards the urban side of this map. So that was interesting. I wouldn't necessarily call it a bad thing, just an observation for, for me to consider, and I'm just curious as to why that has emerged. But anyway, you've heard some, some thoughts and theories on why that might be. Next, I've got a whole lot of, you know, really basic, simple fixes, really. Um, the first one is there's a lot of thank you signs around this map from me. And again, that was because this map was a massive celebration of the fact we've been on the channel for a year, and also the fact that, uh, yeah, we hit 3,000 subscribers recently. So I wanted to plaster a few thank yous around, and someone made a great suggestion that to really avoid breaking the immersion, that I should actually stick those on billboards. And yeah, of course, billboards won't suit all of the environments you're seeing around here. But again, it's a mashup map, so I'm really open to that prospect, and I'm quite keen to actually go through removal the floating thank yous in and just apply them to some billboards just so they're a little bit more integrated into the map <clears throat> and doesn't ruin immersion as much as they currently do so that's just one thought the next thing i did actually notice that i don't have listed here but i saw in the gameplay was that i'm having some issues with the middle pool slash lake area the water level once you put it at a certain height you can actually trigger the animation for players to climb out and when I'm in the editor, that animation works just fine. However, when I play the multiplayer version of the map, so, you know, with real players, the lake is the exact same height, yet the animation does not trigger. And I've been playing around with that for ages now, trying to get it right, but still the animation doesn't always trigger. So it's a bit of a strange one. Uh, not really sure why that is, because if it works in the editor, the live version of the map, if you will, shouldn't have that issue either. So yeah, a bit of a strange one. If you guys know a solution to that, please let me know in the comments. The next fix I have listed down here is uh, regarding lighting. So in addition to wanting to make a nighttime version of this map at some point, if my memory limit allows me, which is pushed to the brink, I definitely noticed that as you see here on screen running into Hell's Arena, there's a bit of a weird thing going on. I expected this to be a really dark section of the map, but look, it's nice and bright apart from a few shadows, despite the entire thing being encapsulated in rocks. One of the members of the Sand Place test team uh, rightly highlighted that because I've used the cliffs to, to frame that, which don't have a back to them, they're almost uh, hollow, if you will, it means that the light can go through them as well. And that's a great tip I didn't know until now. And uh, yeah, it completely makes sense though. So the solution to that is either flip the rocks the other way and basically double layer it and uh, create those, the, those actual barriers to the sunlight, or I can use some generic shapes to basically put a box around that rocky section and really close it off to ensure that place is as dark as I originally intended. Um, the generic shapes should be a relatively easy option because I should be able to hide them with rocks and you shouldn't see them from the exterior or the interior. So yeah, that's definitely something I want to check out and a great tip for anybody else that uh, wants to make a particular area dark and can't work out why that isn't happening. What else do I have here? So, uh, yeah, in Rapture, there's a the burst water main section. There's a road that runs through that. In the original map, I actually stopped one road and then started it again on the other side of the trench. So you didn't get that weird, um, you didn't get that weird graphical thing where it looks like the road is sinking into the trench. You can see it right here on screen. It's almost as if I planned these conversations. Yeah, so in the original map, I was able to do that. However, because you have a limit of eight roads on the editor, and I needed roads elsewhere throughout this map, I couldn't, I didn't have enough available slots to end that road and start it again. One of the guys has suggested I use the dirt and mud decals to hide that road, and that's a great suggestion that will definitely make that trench look a bit more realistic and a little less silly as well. A very tiny little fix as well is that there's some glitch and graffiti in the Country Town Chaos Alley, which I'm right next to right now. That's an easy fix as well, just move it ever so slightly. The fences you can see on that middle island there are actually destructible. They are not the fences I used on the Island Warfare 2 map. 
I thought they were, but they're not. And these ones are destructible and they look a bit silly when they are destroyed. So again, another asset I need to fix there. And the very last thing I need to fix on this map is actually the roof of the bar in Rupture. Rupture has caused us a lot of issues on this map where I am right now. Apparently there is a way to get on top of the roof on that building I was just inside now. And the guys in Team Deathmatch rightly highlighted that to me. And yes, they always find a way to break my maps, which is fun. But yeah, I do need to fix that with some invisible walls and work out how they got up there because it's a pretty big advantage. The last thing I want to finish off with, guys, is of course a positive. It's always good to end on a positive. And yeah, overall, when I look at the complexity of this map, the number of different options I had available to actually throw these different maps together and how they could fit together like a puzzle, I am just so pleased with the end result. I really am. The styles are more or less on point. Of course, you have to make some sacrifices here and there. Um, Everything is pretty realistic as well. When I'm running through this map, I feel like I am in the in the original maps. Uh, so overall, you know, that was the biggest goal for me, and I'm so pleased that that feeling came out. Um, the gameplay was pleasantly surprising, especially in deathmatch mode. Um, I thought it was going to play a lot worse than it actually did. Again, it's never going to be optimal on a map like this where you're making compromises. However, a very pleasant surprise indeed. Again, Deathmatch is definitely the way to go on this map. Team Deathmatch is a bit slower because there's, uh, you know, only half the enemies because half of them are your friendlies, um, which was a surprise, but a pleasant one again because, again, you know, I just feel like it uh, it suits the style of the map, having that crazy all versus all situation. So overall, guys, you know, this was a monumental build. I'm just so pleased it came out as positively as it did, and I, I genuinely look forward to playing this map. It didn't feel like one of these things that just have to be done for the sake of a milestone. I feel like we've actually got a genuinely fun and interesting map out of it but anyway guys they're my thoughts i'm really keen to hear what you think you've obviously seen the speed build you've seen the gameplay now and uh if you if you are on xbox you've probably had a chance to play it yourself as well so let me know what you think of the map any pros any cons and uh yeah let me know what you think of it overall guys so the next thing coming up on the channel this month is actually we're finally getting back into our schedule a bit so april is going to be a subscriber map showcase month this video today is a little late it should have come out in march um so yeah we've got a tomb raider theme going if you want to take part in that check out the theme announcement video for all the details and yeah i'm really looking forward to jumping into the tomb raider and indiana jones maps you guys have created next month which will be uh april well, that'll be may um, in next month in May, we've got another speed build month coming up, and I'm working on a Rainbow Six slash Hitman inspired multiplayer map, which is uh, proving quite contentious in the Sand Players test team right now regarding how it should be developed. So I'm really keen to see what it ultimately looks like and get that speed build out to you guys then. But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you with the raw gameplay now. Enjoy the rest of this video. There's quite a few funny moments throughout this video, some awesome moments. I think I get some collaterals at some point or something. Something. There it is, right on screen right there. Was that a triple kill? It was at least a double. There you go. I'm glad we stuck around for that part. But enjoy the rest of the gameplay, guys. There's uh, some pretty fun moments in this video today. Thank you so much for your support. Again, this was a map to, to uh, mark a milestone here on the channel. And again, I just can't tell you guys how thankful I am for your support. Enjoy the rest of the gameplay, and I'll see you in another video very, very soon. Goodbye. to victory. You're 
Almost there. You are victorious. Team Deathmatch. You're in the lead.
you're behind. Enemy team took the lead.
You took the lead. there. Imminent. Awesome. 